parts that just warp even when you're printing them, angry Prusa XLs, and Adam Savage with a bit of a bamboo failure. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 109. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here and you're having issues with your 3D printers, make sure to reach out to us on all the social medias. Slide into those DMs or email us directly, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com. Myself and Victoria here would love to help you getting back to printing with purpose. We've got an interesting collection for you today, as well as some very short thoughts on the Bamboo Lab X1E, as well as the current issues regarding Maker World. And uh, some really other cool stuff too. So stay tuned because it's going to be an awesome episode. Let's just jump right into it and start fixing some of these fails. How do I get rid of this curling? We've got a print here with some small parts that are starting to curl up. We can see them here on the sides. The higher detail photo we can definitely see at the edges on this print are curling up. And this is actually pretty easy. We can see that it's a Ender 3 S1 with PLA, a 220C with a hardened steel nozzle. They've been having the issues with curling. It seems to go away if I slow down the print substantially, almost to a halt, but there has to be something else they're not doing right, right? Well, kind of. This speed is actually part of the problem. It's a cooling thing. You need to cool your print more. It's actually why printers like the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, the P1P, P1S, and even a printer that we just took a look at, the Chidi Tech X Plus 3, which we'll card to that live stream if you want to take a look, where I unboxed it and did some prints. It actually worked really well. They have auxiliary fans that blow across the part to make sure that everything is cooled down. We've even seen things on like the Sovel SV07 where it's got a big bank of fans on the back side of the X-axis blowing down onto the part. You can look at doing upgraded cooling for the Ender 3 S1, maybe to a 50, 15 millimeter blower, like a Pets Fang or a Hero Me, if you do so feel inclined. But if you're running stock cooling, there's not much you can do. You can try to cut your printing temperatures down. A PLA should be pretty resilient to cut down 10 C or so, even with the hardened steel nozzle, but that will be very dependent on your specific setup and not so much dependent on the cooling itself. You can try. It's not going to hurt. Might jam up once or twice, but you'll figure it out, which I think is the important part here. But we got to get more cooling. Literally a desk fan blowing across your printer will do wonders for something like this. And while you could potentially look at doing support material, because this, this does look like it might benefit from support, support's not going to stop the curling issue that we have. See, with PLA, you want to cool the ever-loving crap out of it, so as soon as it gets out of that nozzle, it effectively hardens immediately. That will keep it from cooling and slowly shrinking and warping like we see here. And when you print on top and on top and on top and on top of hot layers like this that don't get enough time to really cool down and definitely don't have enough material around them to support, you're gonna run into this problem. Now, if this is a design that you yourself made, you can look at adjusting some of the parameters, but if it's not a design that you made, we're kind of stuck getting better cooling or like you showed, slowing the printer down to almost a halt on areas like this. Now there are settings within Prusa Slicer, Orca Slicer and other systems out there that will slow down print speed when it comes to overhangs. And in fact, we can see this here under dynamic overhang speed, which is only available in the advanced tab for Prusa Slicer. This will allow you to slow down your printer when it is doing more overhang, like more bridging. And then that way it gets adequate cooling and can run faster where it doesn't necessarily care too much about the cooling itself. Hope that helps. We got an individual having an issue with a Prusa XL. Our pre-order just came up and I need to pay for it so we can get it in, but stay tuned because we are absolutely gonna be doing an entire stream where we assemble our Prusa XL and eat lots of gummy bears. I'm gonna be wired by the time we're done. But it looks like a single tool head XL here having an absolute stinking time with the machine. The quality of the prints are garbage and now they're getting layer shifts. They reached out to support and was advised check belt tension using the app. Prusa has an app where it utilizes a microphone to detect belt tension as you twang the belt. It's actually a really cool way to do it and not something where I would ever think is valid, but hey, it works. So again, if it's dumb and it works, 
It's not dumb. They wrote back the printer's firmware recently to resolve an issue they were having, but perhaps that's the reason too. The filament is ColorFab XT. Let's take a look at this picture. We definitely have some banding going on and we've got some issues with layer shifts. Now, I don't know what settings that we're running. It would be nice to know if we're running bone stock settings, if we're running custom settings, if there is something else. We definitely have an issue with our retraction. We can see on the organic supports here, you should not have those lines. That is due to either too much retraction or not enough retraction. And quite frankly, this model has way more support than it likely needs. Now, I know that that's not the particular problem, so I don't want to harp on that too much, but you don't want to have more support than you need. And certainly, as we will see, you don't want to not have enough support because the part can get knocked over in that case. In a case like this, I'm going to go ahead and take a shot in the dark and say that the printer probably ran into itself, that it literally ran into the printed part because there's just so many opportunities for this. It is good to add extra Z hop. It costs seconds. And those seconds, if you are trying to print that fast, where seconds really start to matter, then this level of 3D printer might not be right for you. Suffice to say, it's not as big of a deal. Add more Z hop and it should be fine. But we also have some banding lines here. Now, this could be because it's white filament and we all know I don't like white filament because it does show problems that don't actually exist all that much. We can see issues like this, especially in white filament, when you have direct lighting from on top. Little tiny shifts that you wouldn't normally see will become evident because of a shadow. So we can see that they've had issues at roughly the same spots as well. There could be more to this. If you are having layer shifts and failures at roughly the same spot every single time, it's a good measure to run your bed up and down or run your Z axis up and down to make sure that everything is kind of where it needs to be. Because of the way that the XL works with its lead screw, that can be shifted in different directions, it might not be a bad idea to go ahead and loosen those lead screws, loosen the Z rail just a little bit so it can wiggle, send the printer up and then down, then back to the middle and then retighten everything. I am sure that Prusa has a way to solve this. That's how I've done it in the past. So if there is contradiction to what Prusa says, ignore me for right now, listen to the instructions, but in cases like this, it is common if you're just skewed a little bit on those MGN 12 linear rails that they can actually bind up. It doesn't take much to bind up a linear rail. And so if you are dealing with some binding, we might actually just have a mechanical issue that needs to be solved. And to do that, the best thing is loosen the Z motor and Z motion system and just let it figure out where it's happy. Another thing that you can do is Watch those lead screws. As you move the bed up and down, make sure those lead screws are turning true. If they have wobble in them, that wobble is going to translate to your part. That could be because they're bent. It could be because they're not installed properly. There are a couple of different ways. And because these machines are shipped oftentimes completely overseas, things shifting is not impossible. Now, it does suck that an expensive printer like this out of the box is not providing the kind of quality that you're expecting, but Prusa is known for having top level support. Let them help you. Next up, a fail from Mr. Adam Savage himself, one of the OG makers who a lot of us look up to. And he's got a bamboo fail where he just didn't have enough support. And uh, yep, got himself a little bit of spaghetti. Now, I'm interested here because unless Adam has disabled the AI features and does not have his printer connected to the internet, it should not have gotten this far. The printer itself should have been able to detect that there was a problem. But I don't think this is a support failure. It could be, but it looks a lot more like that the part came detached from the build plate. So in a case like this, he's already added a brim. And we've talked about this as if you like it, then you should put a brim on it. You know, uh, 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 never mind. It's good to put a brim on parts that you 
really want to ensure success because brims help with bed adhesion. And on a piece like this, you might want to have more. Adding support might be good too, but I don't know if support would keep the part from popping off the bed. Now, there is some benefit to support, especially things like organic support and snug support, and that it can provide extra stability for a part, especially if it goes out and in a different direction over where specifically it contacts the build plate itself. So yeah, is it a support issue? I don't know. I actually think it's more of a bed adhesion issue. However, one, great photo. Two, it's not that big of a deal. And thankfully the bamboo is such a fast printer that should be up and running in a couple hours. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Definitely make sure you have support where you need it. But in files like this, where you don't have a ton of adhesion to the build plate, add a big brim. It's only gonna add a small amount of time to your print, but could potentially guarantee that this doesn't happen again. Next up, a fail from a bamboo AMS and not in the way that you would expect. What is a strange clear liquid in the bottom of the AMS? And being a Florida man, I know exactly what this is and wiping it around is a bad idea. This is the liquid from desiccant and specifically the type of desiccant that is used inside of the AMS. When it gets so saturated, it will start to leak. This fluid is incredibly caustic and will not only burn you, but will cause damage to the printer. If you are going to try to get it out, please put gloves on and utilize paper towels to get it up. We don't want to be dealing with too much BS. I, I do have a question. Bamboo has had a lot of kind of negative press recently, uh, not just with the X1E, which is a X1 carbon with built-in filtration that is better. It has physical defeat switches for the Wi-Fi, and it also has Ethernet. It can also go about 20C hotter. It's a thousand dollars more expensive, but Bamboo has also been creating Maker World profiles for designers without their consent. This is a copyright and trademark issue well before it becomes a GPL issue where they're taking models from places. And you might say, Grant, you say from places, but you must know which places, yeah, they're taking them from printables because Photos Mint only really uploads his models to printables. So that's where they're getting them from. They're scraping printables for models. They say that if you are a creator and we made a profile for you, you can claim your profile and utilize Maker World, but see, they're impersonating somebody. And if you guys want me to talk about this in more detail, let me know and we can do a dedicated video on it. But I'm just kind of getting tired of talking about all the bad things that Bamboo does. I mean, they make it very easy for me to do it, right? Uh, literally alley oops, but I'm kind of tired of it. And we've talked about this before multiple times that I'm trying to talk less bad about companies in general, but specifically Bamboo. But then they go off and do things like this. This creator did not want this. It is impersonation. It is a violation of copyright. It is a violation of trademarks. These are inherent things that creators have. Stop doing this. You have an opportunity to try to make things better and you just make things worse. Let me give some advice from one business to another. If you're not 100% ready to do something, maybe step back and make sure you have all your ducks in a row. Because the last thing you want to do is get egg on your face like this again. And to those of you saying that we only talk about it to get clicks, you're wrong. Uh, we talk about it to bring exposure to it. We want people to understand the ethical and moral issues that exist in doing this level of theft, the issues with encrypted log files, the issues with printers stealing your data. Because the X1 E is a thousand dollars more and does not have a thousand dollars more worth of stuff. Except what it does have is the ability to functionally defeat Bamboo's ability to get your data. So are you paying a thousand dollars so that they can't sell your data? Or are you paying a thousand dollars because that's just the business tax? I don't know, but being that it will only be sold through resellers, I'll be curious to see how that goes. And resellers like Matter Hackers are currently working to get this thing up for sale. I would like to take a look at one because I want to check if it's actually phoning home and if so, how. But unfortunately, I've been made aware that the X1E, even though it can be disabled from going online, cannot currently update unless it's online. So it's the same damn problem that I have with my X1 Carbon that is, well, by the time this video goes live, 
on its way back to Bamboo for the second time because I'm kind of done. But hey, don't worry, we have another X1 Carbon and we're going to be taking a look to fix it as it was a fans printer and we're going to be putting it back together. But this is the kind of stuff that kind of chaps my ass in the wrong way because they had an opportunity to do this right, which is reaching out to the creator and saying, hey, we would love for you to be on Maker World. If you'd like, we can get all of your files from printables or wherever. We can make the profile for you and all you have to do is log in and we'll take care of the rest and make it very simple. But instead they said, screw it, we're just gonna do it without asking. And while some of you might say, well, that's useful to the creator, it is only useful to the creator if that's what they want. Anyways, I digress. If you guys want a dedicated video on it, let me know. If you want a dedicated video on the X1e, and my thoughts about it, let me know. Maybe we'll put those two together in a coming video because yeah, got a lot of East Coast Rep Rep Festival content coming out. We just released our first two videos. We'll card to the playlist so you guys can take a look and there's a lot more Earth content coming out next week and likely the week after as well. But let me know in the comments, how do you feel about this? Do you feel like the designers should just be thankful or do they actually have anything to stand on here where this is a violation of their privacy, their trust, and quite frankly, copyrights and trademarks. Not that there's any legal ramification because PRC, but hey, I'd love to know your particular thoughts because there are right ways and then there are wrong ways. And this, this ain't a right way to do it. Sorry. Next up, a fail from Discord member Devoid Colossus who uh, had some fusing of his supports to his model. He's using organic supports and this model yeah, honestly, while I love organic supports, this model's just not designed for it. Regular snug supports would do just fine here. And while, yes, the issue with the supports fusing is a problem, knowing when to use the right type of support is also something that is good to keep in mind. Because, you know, if you don't have the right support for your model, having the right settings only gets you so far. In a case like this, you want to make sure that your Z contact distance is appropriate. And in most slicers, it's actually 0.2 millimeters. We use something that's a little bit different. What we actually ended up doing here for Devoid Colossus is we gave him uh, some tips on the support. Having good support settings matters a ton. And things like your Z contact distance will really change the way that you look at your parts. We actually do a smaller Z contact distance, but we use interface loops to make the part come off a lot easier and by golly does it ever it's pretty awesome and we love when the supports just peel right off the part because it makes your life so much easier if you guys want a video on tuning supports let me know we can add it to the docket but probably not going to get to it for at least a month with all the content that we have planned here so far but let me know in those comments below. But I do want to give a massive shout out to all of our channel supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for what you all do in making these videos possible, making trips like going to the East Coast Rep Rap Festival possible and more. Without you guys, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. And hey, you can support us for as little as $1 a month. You know where the links are. Click them if you don't mind. And hey, like and subscribe if you haven't already because that does go a long way to helping the channel grow and cost you nothing but you know, a tenth of a second of your time. That's all I have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one.